Hello everyone, welcome to another short review. Today's is going to be a pretty special one for me, since this is my favorite set I own. This is 75243 Slave 1 20th Anniversary Edition. It has 1,007 pieces and it retailed for $119.99, which is overpriced. I mean, okay. It is the biggest of the 20th anniversary sets and is also the best. Um, it is also retired now, so it is a 2019 release. Unfortunately, you're going to have to pay a bit more to get it now. It's like upwards of 200 so uh, it's a little pricey. But I hope you can get it if you want it, because it's definitely worth it. Uh, let's see, I'll take a look at the famous Slave 1 in a minute, but let's take a look at the minifigs, which you get technically five of them, but six, I mean... Six of them. I'll, I'll, I'll count the Carbonite as the sixth one. But we get some fantastic figures here. Uh, we get Boba Fett, of course. This is his ship. Um, he's, of course, the, the one of the famous bounty hunters from, you know, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, speaking of the Empire Strikes Back, that is his outfit here. Uh, because that's the, the sand blue. That's what he was wearing in the movie. He's got his gun, he's got his little cape, he's got his jetpack, his helmet, his little antenna. He's ready to go. His detail is just ridiculous. Like, this, the detail is just, it's its out of this world. It's amazing. I'm not going to show the back printing because that takes forever to take all this stuff off. But, I take up his helmet. There's his face, it's angry clone, which... Eh, that's all right. No alternate face. He doesn't need it. He can be wearing the helmet 90% of the time. And uh, it's just amazing. Um, the Boba Fett's are always awesome. Especially these new ones. Because they're all just so detailed. Amazing. Uh, we get two bounty hunting rivals. The first of which is Forlom. This is the protocol droid. One of the six famous hunters in the tiny brief scene in the empire strikes back you probably remember or maybe you don't but he was one of the the other bounty hunters that vader hired um and he's pretty sweet he was also available in another set the bounty hunter speeder bike battle pack that came out oh, quite a while ago i do have that but if you don't have that this is a great way to get him he's pretty detailed he's basically just a rusty droid uh, he does have a great headpiece that's exclusive to him he does have a gun and some great printing overall. A great um, figure. We do get Zuckus. He is the one of the few exclusives. Uh, he only appears in this set. He's got a gun, which I will move so you can see the detail. Um, his detailing is really ridiculous because he doesn't. He only appears for like six seconds. Same with Forlom, but somehow Lego got the detail right again. Uh, there's his head. It's also, you know, unique for him. And he does have a dress piece, um, but it shows his, like, robes that he was wearing in the scene. And he does have some exquisite detailing, surprising for a character that only appeared for a few seconds, which is just great. And yeah, I wouldn't blame you if you want to get the set just for him. Uh, we get Han Solo, of course, Boba Fett's rival. Uh, we get him, and this is like the Empire version of him. So he has the blue jacket um, and the brown pants. He also has his great new hairpiece. He also has two faces. One of them is the scowl. He also has another happy, cheerful look. Uh, he's the only one that has two faces. The other ones don't, which is fine. His detailing is great. We Next, we get Han, but now he's been frozen in carbonite. And this is not a new piece. This is the... This has been used since 2010. So that Slave 1 came with this. That that was the first time we got this. But it's just a common piece now. You can pretty much get it with any Slave 1. Or any Cloud City set, pretty much. So it's a little basic. But it's really accurate and really cool to get. Uh, because it's just so cool looking. And it is a 3D piece, and you can put Han in the back if you want to. And lastly, as she falls over, we get Princess Leia. And this is a very different Princess Leia. 
This is the version from back in the day, from 1999, or I mean, I guess 2000. So the Millennium Falcon that came back in the day, that came with this set, uh, version. And this is basically a reproduction. The only difference is this on the back. It says 20 years Lego Star Wars. So that's cool. Uh, no alternate face, not very much detailing. A simple gun, but it's pretty good. And she does come with a, a little stand that says it's 20 years, Lego Star Wars 1999, 2019, Princess Leia. And um, yeah, it's quite dusty. <laughs> Sorry about that. But it's there. And that's nice. So those are the minifigs. All of them are excellent, especially Boba Fett. Um, the bounty hunters are nice. Han Solo is nice. And pretty much every figure is nice in this. So yeah. As he falls over. Uh, let's see. The Slave One. Eh, this is a weird ship. Um, it's very strange. Uh, it's going to be kind of hard to show you. Um, it's just a very strange model. Uh, but that's how it was in the movie. So It also appears in Attack of the Clones as well as the Mandalorian. So it's not just in Empire Strikes Back. Uh, sorry for the dust again. It, the color scheme, uh, compared to the Razor Crest, it's much more colorful. Like It's got so much green and gray and red, and it's just more color-based, which is how it was in the, in the source material. It does have a lot of features, um, the biggest of which is the gravity feature. But I'll talk about that in a minute. You get ten stickers. Let's see. You get two on the front here. Two on each winglet. You also get two inside the cockpit. And you get two here. So it's not too bad on stickers. You can just leave those off even if you wanted to. Uh, let's talk about the cockpit. It's a big old you know, windshield piece. If we zoom in here, you can kind of see the detailing. Kind of. Um, it's kind of hard to see. There's that sticker. My favorite sticker is this one. This one shows the Slave One when it's landed. It's like a digital readout, which is really cool. Um, but this is one of the features, so you'll notice there is a little seat, and it's kind of moving. Well, if you put your Boba Fett... Uh, do I really want to put him in there? Okay, I'm not going to put him in there. But it, when you put him in there, and you sit him down, basically, when you put the entire... The Slave One is not meant to be like this. It's meant to be vertical. So... If you go like this and raise the ship like this, now it's in its proper orientation and Boba Fett would rotate with the seat. It's kind of hard to show. Um, because it's like so big. But like this, there. You can see the seat moving there. That's what I'm talking about. And the wings also rotate. Um, but for the rest of this, I'm going to set it down because I can't even see. Or you can't even see it very much, but... Hope you got that, you know, you know, the gist of it. The winglets this time around are just, the detailing is just extravagant. Like they put so much detail into those wings. Um, that is amazing. The stickers add to it too. Um, there's also specific pieces made for this, like these. These are the um, wedge parts in dark red. And they just kind of shape the model. Like they make it look more like, angular like how it was in the movie and the movie basically it was just one long painting like it was just like a one shot kind of thing which it, it's pretty cool they do have let's see it does have weapons uh it does have these two cannons which can rotate um you can rotate them pretty much all the way around but they're really just meant to be like that which is nice they do okay there is spring-loaded shooters it's gonna be kind of hard to show, but on the front here, right here, you can see them. They're like these green, like little circles. If you tilt it to the back, this is the famous slave one view. That's what it looks like. And there's some couple triggers up here. Well, how do you hold this thing? Cause it's a very strange model. Well, the designers have you covered. They've got a handle that's built into this thing. It's like a Technic handle, and it just folds up. But really, it's meant to be gripped by your hand. And now, when you 
hold it, you can actually activate the triggers and shoot those with your thumb, which is nice. And a hidden detail is on the very bottom. You can see a couple clips, and yes, you can clip Boba's blaster on the bottom if you like, which is really nice. And I think the last major feature is the cargo hold. Of course, you remember Boba Fett saying that in the film. And this is the landing ramp, and if you open this up, that gives you some space inside. You, you can't really see it, but there's some space in there. And if you take your carbonite brick, or carbonite piece, you can just slide it in there, and there you go. That will close up, and you can zoom off to collect your payment, or not. You can, you know, put whatever you want in there. It's definitely a weak storage area compared to the Razor Crest, which has like storage everywhere. But that's a different set. We're not talking about that. So I think that's really all that this will do. It doesn't do too much because it's, uh, it's not that kind of ship. But what it does do is really nice. I love the cockpit. I love the, the way this all the angles are. It just looks so like pretty. Like, it's just a really great model to just look at, because all the colors, like all the techniques. You should look at the instructions. If you want to see, if you're not going to buy it, I think you should at least look at the instruction book to see how everything was built. Because it was just really fun to build it. Like, it was just fun to see the progress, especially this angle. You remember this angle from the film. This shot, like how it was in the movie this upward angle i'm not going to reveal how that was built but it was so cool like oh it's just so satisfying um i think that's it though it doesn't come with a display stand which is fine not many sets do these days which is okay but oh man i would so recommend this set especially well for three reasons if you're a big Boba Fett fan, of course you need this, because it's a ship. If you're a big um, Empire Strikes Back fan, then of course you probably want to have this. And if you're a big fan of bounty hunting ships, then you're probably going to want this. Um, otherwise, you know, the Slave One doesn't appear that much, so... I mean, at least not in the movies. It doesn't appear very much in the movies. In the comics, and in the Mandalorian, and... Um, just other media that appears a lot, but in terms of the movies, it's barely shown, which is fine. Um, the minifigures are all phenomenal, so at least get it for that. Um, yeah, that, I give it a 10 out of 10. It's my favorite set in my collection, of course. It's gonna get the highest score possible. So, yeah, that's, um, The Slave One. Um, hope you liked my review of it. I hope it wasn't too long. Um... Expect at least some other style reviews on it for, you know, if you want to go more in-depth with it, um, which I'll do soon. So, that'll be fun. And let me know what you think about this Slave One. Do you think it's, you know, not very good? Do you think it's a great set? I know a lot of people love it, and uh, it's fantastic. I even like it more than the, the big Slave One, the UCS. I just think it's better, like a better value. It was expensive, though. You should probably get it at a discount if you're going to get it. So, yeah. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. And take care. I'll see you in the next review. And more to come. So stick for that. And I'll see you later.